Chigala and if you're new here hey how are you welcome and if you're an oldie but a goodie hey girl welcome back so today we are filming my bad story the drama with this story guys today we are filming my bad story so um i gave birth about a month ago as we are doing this baby is a month old so um let's start from from the beginning the last video you saw was the day before my induction so let's start from that friday so um the friday prior to that i had a doctor's appointment um i was 38 weeks and three days it was my 38th week doctor's appointment so i got to the doctor and guys i was tired i just felt like i cannot go on another week i did not have the strength to go on another week so i told my doctor doc i'm tired i can't sleep i can't walk i'm in pain everywhere can we consider an induction he was like okay um no problem what matters is that you are happy i was like thank you so he called the labor ward and scheduled me for Monday. This was on a Friday. Scheduled me for Monday. Um, and he said, be there at 6 a.m. Just go straight to the labor ward. So Monday, me and Habi leave in the morning and we went to the hospital. We got there around quarter past six. And immediately when I got there, we, we just went straight in uh they put a monitor on me just to monitor if i'm having contractions and if the baby's heartbeat is active yeah to check if the baby is alive so we confirmed that sent papers i came to the hospital with a live baby for an induction we started on the mats i was being given some little liquid thing in a little thing so I started on some meds. I also take um, a shot every two hours. So we started with all that. So guys, uh, I also take like those shots daily eight per day. And the whole of Monday. <laughs> Nothing a bit. Nothing happened. I finished the whole course of the induction meds and nothing happened. I think the only difference that I felt was that my Braxton Hicks increased. Increased as an in intensity, but it wasn't painful. Just a little bit uncomfortable. So that's it basically. That's the only thing that happened. And when my doctor came in the evening, he asked, so how's everything going? I'm like, nada we are just still here but my braxton hicks have increased he was like that's a good thing that's a good thing we are on the right track so we'll start again with the dose tomorrow morning and then he left for the day so at around 1 a.m this is tuesday 1 a.m at around 1 a.m i started having some mild contractions like those braxton hicks that i've been having there was a little bit more discomfort with it not too painful but a little bit of pain so and they were they were about an hour apart they were about an hour apart yes so that's the official start of contractions so yeah 1 a.m contractions started and around six we got from one hour 
to I think they were like 30 minutes apart we got from one hour to 30 minutes apart and now they were becoming a bit painful like I needed to to breathe through them so I needed to breathe through them because it was mm. so the midwife came for the day um, monitored me checked the contractions and say okay looks like you're having contractions you're not yet you are in the early stages of labor you're not yet in active labor but definitely today we are having the baby I was like, Yay. definitely today we are having the baby so put me on the medicine again we started our first shot and at around 11 she came back, gave me my second shot, did another monitoring of the contractions and the baby's heart rate. So when she came for the second time, she was like, okay, can I check your cervix? Let's check if we are progressing, how far we are. She checked the cervix and I was, I was four centimeters. Yes, I was four centimeters dilated. And I was like, yeah, I was celebrating guys. I was like, you know what, that means, Baba is coming today. That means Baba is coming today. So we started to, 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 you know, play around with it. So she was like, I think baby's gonna come around about two, about three. And I'm like, four, five, six. But we have the whole day and definitely I'm having my baby today. Tomorrow I'll be out of this hospital. Man, did I lie to myself. <laughs> so anyway, as, as 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 she was trying to put like as she was putting the 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 monitoring thing in it's like two belts the other one monitors the heart rate the other one monitors the contraction so as she was putting the thing in it was very, kind of a bit difficult to to catch the baby's heart rate positioning and stuff like that so i was i was told to lay on my back so i was laying on my back and we finally were able to hear the the heart rate we're finally able to hear the heart rate this is around uh, around your to 12. we are finally able to hear the heart rate and um so i'm not the the monitor is here so this is where it's like doing the three, 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 three. there's lines there's the heart rate the classic the contractions so I'm not seeing them. I'm just laying in bed and she's just standing there. So she's paying too much attention. So I'm asking, what's wrong? She's, she's not answering me. So I, I turn my head and I look at it. And I'm noticing that, like, the baby's heart rate is around 145. 145 to 152 to 143. It's just ranging around that. So I'm noticing that after every contraction, the baby's heart rate drops all the way to 98. So I'm asking her, is it supposed to be doing that? She's like, no. That's what I'm, I'm trying to, to, that's what I'm paying attention to. So anyway, she's like, okay, let me go call your doctor. She goes, by the way, my doctor has a clinic in, 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 in GPH, so she's just downstairs, like, He's just downstairs. So she goes and she gives my doctor a phone call. And in the next 10 minutes, my doctor came. And I looked at it. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, I see. I see. I see what you mean. So he was like, okay, change position. Be on your your right side because the monitors were the side. So like, sleep on your right. And let's see if it will improve. So I turned and moved to my right. And then he left he said okay um monitor her for a bit and then i'll be back she left like he left and then the same thing was still happening but now it was not going to 198 but it was going to 110 which is still bad so came back after another five minutes and realized that the thing is still happening so he's like, okay, we're going to have to go into emergency season. Okay. By the way, as all this is happening, guys, 
my contractions have moved from every 30 minutes it's not every 15 minutes so they're more painful they're more frequent and all this is happening the doctor is talking to me here there's a few people in my the 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 the, the, the lady or Mudon, i think is the matron i go come in the whole labor ward there's two nurses there's my doctor so it's like okay we're gonna have to go into emergency scissor this is not good the baby is not happy okay at that point it was just get this baby here as safely as possible that was the the plan that was what was in my head to get the baby here as safe as possible so i'm like okay can i call my husband he's like no problem but we're not gonna wait for him luckily had this work is like 15 minutes away so i call him i'm like baby hatara season child is 10 minutes away like it's from gph to cbd so it's like 10 five minutes okay baby after we are going into emergency season he's like okay no problem i'm on my way he came and he was there and I was barely, <laughs> I could barely see him. I could barely feel him because by the time he came, I'm being prepared for theater. So I'm being put on catheters, it's a monotherapy, like there's a lot going on. There's some people went to sign to say I consented to this. Yo, there's a lot that is going on and it's an emergency. So people are running around. People are running around and my doctor is like, we need to get her to theater now so they're running around and he came he sat down and he asked if i'm okay he saw that i was having contractions and wanted to hold my hand but he couldn't because these people are around me yo but anyway um soon soon i was being wheeled out this is now around one i got to theater at one and guys I was in a good theater at the hub is not allowed in. Why? It's an emergency, so it's not an elective scissor. We do not prepare for it. So we just need to do this as fast as possible. We don't have the time to get him ready, prepared, prepped, and all that. We just want to concentrate on you. That's the reasons they told me. And guys, we had a plan. Javier's gonna be in the room. He's gonna be the first person to hold the baby. And we're gonna take pictures. He was gonna vlog. But all that did not happen. So I get into theater. They have to now nun me. By the way, remember, I'm still having contractions. They have to nun me. So they give me a pillow with my very huge belly. I'm supposed to bend like this, holding onto the pillow. I'm like, I need somebody to hold my hands. So this lady comes and she holds my hand and like <laughs> it's so dramatic i'm like so i'm holding her hands as contraction come like i have to i squeeze her head and i have to tell the doctor oh contraction and then the doctor has to stop so until the <laughs> contraction has stopped like the contraction passes and then that's when he can continue with his job so that's how we are working that's how we are working like anything we have to wait for contraction me to move from my bed to the theater bed we had to wait for a contraction to stop we only have that little couple of minutes in between contractions for me to do anything but the nice thing as soon as the the spinal block was in all pain left and i was calm i was calm now and they put this thing where they hide where they hide okay let me fix something they put this thing where they make sure you don't see what is happening on the other side but i'm feeling the movement like i'm feeling the touching like somebody is messing up with my belly like that there's pressing and pushing but yeah it's it's weird it's a weird experience like you feel it but you don't feel anything. I don't know how to explain it. You are numb, but you can feel the touching and the, the manipulation. So yeah, um, doctor does 
he's staying he's busy with my belly and in my head i'm thinking nothing has started ne? i'm thinking nothing has started can't they know we are done next thing i hear happy birthday and that baby's crying like baby cried and then kept quiet you know when i was uh what that you were one month you were mm -mm. took baby rushed to to the thing next thing oxygen on baby baby's not breathing yep baby's not breathing and so the the pediatrician is there waking the baby out like trying to get the baby to breathe and yeah and i'm there i'm just looking i don't know what's going on here i think i was being stitched but i'm not concentrating there i'm concentrating on the side on the baby i'm asking is the baby okay is the baby okay is the baby okay and nobody's answering me and then he started to hear some cries like he started to hear some cries some cries some cries and then now we are crying we are crying we are crying and i was like thank you god like when i was asking if the baby is okay i was praying i was meditating i was like god let my baby be okay let my baby be okay let my baby be okay i cannot go through all this for nothing god no you can't do this to me <laughs> So I'm there, I'm praying, I'm like, God, you cannot do this to me. This baby has to be okay. This baby has to be okay, Lord. And then we hear crying, we are crying, we are healthy, we are okay. So the, the doctor comes and she tells me, okay, the baby is fine. I had to sit him away. There was a bit of a bit but now it's stable and it wasn't that long that it could cause a damage or anything you know if you're not breathing brain damage stuff like that so it's like okay it was not that long that it could cause any damage or sharp oh so i'm gonna go update your husband outside i'm gonna update that my husband and yeah as well that of theater and guys immediately i got some more yet now we are postpartum <laughs> let's talk postpartum guys firstly i did not plan on c-section i knew it was a possibility because i i had the doctor Arim. um there's a cord wrapped around the baby i think i showed it to you in the last vlog there's a cord wrapped around the baby's neck so the idea was that we try by all means to do natural birth but we see how the baby reacts so how the baby reacts we can either have a successful have a successful natural birth sam please baby please we can either have a successful natural birth but if anything happens we are definitely going with plan b it was still out there in the background scholar you know what this might be it and my doctor had explained it to us that this is what is happening we might end here so we were already we are not prepared we are praying that it's natural everything goes well because sam had the card wrapped around his neck like twice so we gave birth normally and all was well so in my head i was like okay we'll get done of this before i can't no, not this time so now we are postpartum. My BP is being monitored. I'm still in theater. I just monitor my BP and I start to vomit like on my inside. Remember, this was an emergency, so I had had breakfast, which is served at 9:30. Yeah, around 9:30. So I was literally I had eaten just a couple of hours, like two or three hours before I went into theater. So my insides also come out. <laughs> mind you after a season they say you have to lie flat for your spinal fluid to stabilize and stuff like that so now i cannot lie flat or i'm gonna choke <laughs> i'm gonna choke on my feet guys this is traumatic so they had to elevate me a bit so that i can be able to throw up I was throwing up for like 
This is at two, three, four, five. I think till about five, I start throwing up. It's like for three hours, like every now and then I would need to, 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 to throw up. So this is one of the first things that I started feeling. The after effects, guys. The after effects of scissor. At this time, I'm still numb. There's no pain. There's no nothing. I'm just vomiting. Next thing, when I say I'm still vomiting, this is now night. Tuesday night. This is now Tuesday night. My body starts itching. Yo. <laughs> My body starts itching. I tell the nurse, my lady. My whole body is itching. <laughs> my whole body is itching. She's like, um, should I give you meds for that? Can I have a kid? Like, I'm going to give you meds for vomit. Now my body is itching. She's asking if she should give me meds for that. I'm like, you know what? I think my body is pumped with a lot of meds right now. Plus, I still have the anesthesia on. So you know what? It's fine. We'll we'll try to sleep through this. My body is itching through the night, and I guess it happened. <laughs> I've not bathed. I'm somebody who bathes twice a day religiously. I'll bath in the morning. I'll bath in the evening. I cannot bath in the morning and sleep without bathing. My body is up. That's just natural anymore. So at this point, I don't know, like, I when Chris I got it, I get up and my body issues when I've not bad. It's okay. Like, I don't know what's going on. So my body is itching all through the night. I'm itching myself, itching myself. So the following day, this is now Wednesday. My body is still itching, but the pain meds have worn off. Like the, the, yeah, the anesthesia, the spinal block has worn off. So I'm now taking oral pain meds. Le, 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 the trip. I still have a trip on. So I'm taking the oral pain meds. I'm taking antibiotics and I'm taking, I'm taking another pain med through the trip. And guys, pain meds are bad. I felt this other pain that I've never felt in my life. <laughs> Guys, labor, normal labor, it's nothing. You go through contractions, it's nothing. It's painful. Yes, you go crazy. You feel like you wanna pull your hair out. You go crazy. But this one was so painful. I remember I can a bit. I was ringing the bell, they're like, what's up? I'm like, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so, like, it's, like, it's like, it's like, I'll <laughs> And this is happening in one side of my stitches. I think it's at the end. It's happening in one side. It's so painful. So the doctor, like, the, the nurse comes running with the mats and puts the drip one because it's fast acting. Puts the one it's in a mudri beans like can I mirror you for your meds for our I didn't think it'll run out this fast. So gives me the RL I drink and doze off because I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain, so I drank them and then I, I dozed off. And then I dozed off. Now the beauty of it guys, the beauty of it is all this time. Are taking care of my baby. <laughs> my baby is a nursery. Like one night is corona, get like one hour when I'm up and try to feed, bond, stuff like that. And then as soon as uh, my pain meds come, they take the baby plus as soon as feed time, can I get the milk is not coming, so they're feeding the baby in the nursery. So feeds the bathing baby that I literally taking care of everything and I'm just dealing with the turmoil of postpartum so anyway now we are in Thursday oh one thing I forgot to mention I started walking in on Wednesday 
this is around one they removed my drapes my catheter and everything and then i was allowed to walk around so that we get rid of the bloating we get our muscles back to work and and all that so the nurse was assisting with that like with the standing up and walking it's like you can go to the bathroom so she assisted me like to stand up from the bed and to go to the bathroom and guys i've never not been able to stand up in my life like my core muscles non-existent my core muscles non-existent like i'm trying to stand up and i'm struggling to stand up i'm struggling to stand up i'm in pain like whenever i stand up it's tight it's painful so the nurse had to help me like i have to hold on to something to stand up so i'm holding into really Balao. i'm holding the nurse on the other side she's pulling me up like yo i'm i'm incapable of doing anything it was sad, honestly. It was sad. It was frustrating. You can't even turn to the other side. Like for you to turn to the other side. Mind you, I was For you to turn to the other side. You can't even lift yourself. You can't even lift yourself to, to be able to turn. Guys. Guys. Postpartum delivery a C-section is is a nightmare it's traumatizing it's traumatizing so thursday morning i get discharged now i'm able to walk around it's getting better with the standing and the sitting it's, it's getting better it's still tight but it's getting better the sitting and the the standing and the laying down it's all getting better so we get discharged this around 11 my doctor comes and discharges us discharges me and then remits and nana are discharged pediatrician by the way i've signed the bill i've paid everything pediatrician has and it's like the baby is jaundiced the baby is jaundiced we have to put the baby on phototherapy I'm still trying not to say the gender. I'll say it at the end of the video. We have to put the baby in phototherapy. And by the way, all my kids were genders. It was never a big thing. Like I had this doctor, he passed away last year. His name was Dr. Mafoko. Very amazing. That man was my doctor since I was like 18, struggling with cysts through my first born, through my second born, took care of the pregnancies, took care of everything. So, when my two kids were genders, took my for be like, okay, I'm seeing my dad para and go outside for a couple of minutes just to walk around the house. The baby, you need to walk anyway, so go walk around for a couple of minutes, I'll move this thing here, the baby will be fine. So, it was not that big of a deal, but, now we are here in the hospital an extra day normally it happens <laughs> that's why i don't have to be discharged on wednesday normally it happens and now it's happening on a thursday i'm still in the hospital and the doctor is saying my baby has to spend the night at the hospital and i'm discharged <laughs> My husband comes, Muna is putting on a t-shirt that is matching the baby's <laughs> color. He's supposed to be picking us up. the baby was We're so stressed, guys. I think Saliki is just like 11 pagala because I'll talk about like a five. Like the evening. Just sit out on the bed. <laughs> And I couldn't go. I remember the, 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 the nurse thought, okay, how much is it per night so that I can spend the night and be here with the baby? That's all right, I have to pay it cash. How do I explain to Bobby to get this charge? And then we can buy almost back there. Like, there's no way Bobby is covering that, so it has to come out of our pocket. The nurse is like, it's around 5K. What? 
Okay, but I'm not using all the other tools, all the other things in your in your room. I just want a bed. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's 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 the fee. We can't afford that. We cannot afford that. So I had to go home without my baby. I had to go home and leave my baby at the hospital. I remember getting home and my kids were happy. They were running to the car and there was no baby in the car. And someone was asking me, like, where's the baby? I'm like, the baby had to remain in the hospital. He's like, with the who? I'm like, with the nurses. It's like, my son looked at me like, I am the most irresponsible mother in the whole world. I left the baby at the hospital with strange skies. <laughs> okay, me, I had been there for the whole week, so I know baby is in safe hands. It's just that it's painful for me as a mom to leave my newborn there to say, well, like, it was painful. But here is this little boy. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, not Muslim. <laughs> Is her head working properly? What does she mean by she left the baby at the hospital? She left her home with the baby and now she's not coming with the baby. She left the baby at the hospital. So luckily when I got home and she had cooked, we got home around six. Luckily when I got home and she had cooked and to I ate and then I went to a shower. And guys, as soon as I got some more shower, I'm that pain, I remember that pain. That pain came back. It was hitting, like on the side. Like it was hitting so bad, I was there like walking like this. You know, walking like your grandmother. <laughs> I was walking like my grandmother, guys. Like bended. I can't go straight. Like I was in pain. I remember my husband asking, are you okay? What can I do? I was like, give me my meds. Like got me my mess I drank them by the way eat these I'm not acting right there and there I drank my meds and I remember like like you know answer I remember him supporting me and I was like just working slowly like hello to the bed and my muscles are not working and all that so I just the position that I was in, I dozed off in that position. I remember tears like coming out of my eyes. I was in that much pain. I was in that much pain, guys. And mind you, it's still on one side. I don't know what was going on with this side. Like on the left side. Was it the left or the right? I don't even remember now. <laughs> like the pain is in one side. I doze off in that side. This is like, this is around eight. I doze off in that side. And I had to go to the bathroom. I had to wake my husband up. But baby, you need to help me get up. By the way, the tip is the hospital. The tip is the hospital. The tip is the hospital. So I need help getting up. I was like, baby, you need to help me get up. Come and see. Oh, this man was amazing, guys. You don't understand. He comes and he, he pulls me up and helps me to go to the bathroom. I come back, I get in bed and go back to sleep. I think I woke up around 6 at 6 a.m. I was up Friday. At 6 a.m. I was up. Um, I remember. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's Saturday, some is yeah. So I remember I woke up at six in the morning and I started preparing things for the baby. Like I made the bed, I took out the blankets, like like the cot. I made the cot, I took out the blanket because I had not ta taken out the sheets and all that and the bedding and all that. So I made the bed, I took out the blankets, I did everything that needs to be done because I know how to get home and pick up. I was going to do that because I was bad then. 
so i know now that um i have to go pick the baby up and so i prepared all that and i'm looking at this man he's sleeping okay he was amazing but he's sleeping and like a high man so I remember, I remember waking him up. I'm like, how are you sleeping, my baby? I saw my baby. He looked at me, he laughed. He's like, how long have you been up? I'm like, I've been up since seven. And since six. And right now it's half past seven. By the way, I get happy like I'm ready, everything. And I'm ready. I'm ready to go to the hospital. I know that there should be a blood test done to check what I'm. The, 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 the. Bilirubin levels are low and stuff like that. But. I wanna go. But we ended up leaving the home around nine because he was just stalling, was just moving around. Like my miss cooking because I I needed to go to, to go back to the hospital to go get my baby. At least if I'm not getting the baby, I needed to be at the hospital to be with my baby. Like to be goodness I don't want to do. I just wanna sit in a chair and just be with my child. Even if I just watch the baby sleeping, it was still fine. So anyway, guys, um, that was um, that was how everything happened. Um, the baby was discharged around twelve. Um, we got to take baby home, and the first thing I did was like, baby, we need to pass by the shops. I passed by Woolworths to get a few things that I needed, like some fruits and stuff. So yeah, I had to pass by Woolworths to get um some few things that I needed. Fruits and veggies, uh, the bread for the kids' lunch boxes, and also I needed to get some cute gender specific stuff, just one or two cute outfits to celebrate. To celebrate the birth and the health of this little baby, and it had been a journey, it had been a journey. And I'll, 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 I'll explain that in another video. It had been a journey, a very long journey of uncertainty, a very long journey of long prayers, a very long journey of possible genetic issues. So I was just glad that I have a healthy little baby and I felt we needed a little bit of spoiling so that's why i passed through the mall now guys okay i'm done i'm done with this video i'm writing some things down here now i need to understand i need to understand from you from you guys how do you do this second time third time fourth time how on earth do you have more than one child a c-section because i'm traumatized oh yeah there's something that i did not mention but this this happened <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll mention it i'll mention it in a few so how do you guys do it how do you guys do it how do you guys do it how do you have first second third with cesarean because i'm traumatized for days where i'm sitting right now i am traumatized if my first child would have came with caesar i would they would not be seven little baby because there was absolutely no way i'm doing this again there was absolutely no way i'm doing this again the recovery process of this thing it's it's a lot it's a lot i'm somebody who doesn't like being incapable i'm somebody who is very independent who does most things for herself and the fact that i could not even get out of bed it killed me i needed to rely on my husband to get out of bed I was wiped clean at the hospital. I could not even take a bath. I hated every moment of that. But honestly, as much as I hated the process, I'm just glad the baby is okay. And to have a healthy child, I guess I'll do it again. But like I'm saying, 
it's a one-time experience i'm not doing this again this is my last baby we end doing this again We is done. No mistakes, no nothing. We are done. So anyway, um, the past couple of weeks, as I said, we are four weeks out. The past couple of weeks, um, right now, I'm I'm okay. I'm healed. I have took time to rest and just concentrate on myself. I don't know. You know, you know, things of God, guys. Things of God, cause. I decided that I need help. I need an auntie. And I need a stay in auntie to come and help with the kids and take care of the home. I didn't even know that I was going to be incapable of doing anything. So the beauty of it is that Javi auntie have been so amazing. Especially auntie. She's, she's been cooking. Okay. She's not a chef, a, a, a chef and she doesn't cook like me. But she's been cooking, cleaning, taking care of Sam. She's just been amazing. Kim has been helping out. And my husband, guys, my husband. You know what? That man deserves a gift. His birthday, my tenor previous one. His birthday, I'm spoiling him because he deserves it. He never missed any doctor's appointment. He was there through labor. He was by my side. Even now, he makes sure that when I'm breastfeeding, I have the pillow, I have this, I have this. He's just been so, so, so amazing. And I guess this is what we wanted. This is how we imagined having our last baby. Because we felt like with Sam, we we're still young our life was not figured out we're not really mature enough but now we we are at a place where we are mature we know what we want and we have a picture of how we want to do this so it's been a very relaxed very satisfying period i'm enjoying every bit of it and the help that i'm given it's been amazing guys it's been amazing and now there are two two symptoms that i forgot postpartum this is first week and second week after giving birth um now because i had to be elevated like my back had to be elevated so that i don't choke apparently my things were not stabilized so first week couple of days in i had this throbbing headache like i get so <laughs> when i lift my head the headache is heating so bad like you bits and when you close your eyes that was the kind of headache i was having and it lasted for like around four days and it was not even pain meds. You know, you could not even numb it with pain meds. No, it was resistant to pain meds. Cause by then I was still in my pain medication. I was still in my antibiotics. I still had everything going on, but that headache, nothing on it. So I was just laying down. Like I needed to lay down. I'll just stand up to go get Meet the bang one or something for the baby or go to the loo, that's about it. Or go bath, that's about it. That's as much standing up as I'll do. Otherwise, I spend most of my time just laying down. And then after that, I swelled up. I swelled up from my feet to my hands to my face to my lips. Everything was solid. Everything was solid. I googled it. Hello, yeah, Dr. Google. <laughs> I literally survived this period of Dr. Google. I googled it. They said, you know, the water from the drain from the pregnancy, there's a whole lot of water accumulation in your body. So it needs time to come out and stuff like that. So, everything was just swelling up. Like, limo. Like, everything. My lips, my nose. I was. Guys. 
but now we are good now we are fine we are good and we are two weeks away from our six weeks and we're gonna hear what the doctor has to say about our healing and all that but so far honestly i'm good i'm not like in pain and also my my thing my scar has healed my seizure yeah whatever the name is as well from Toyone has healed up it's closed i keep on checking on it it's closed it's healed up and we are good now let's do the rocks um the shigala household me and my handsome hubby and Kevin Sam. We've been blessed with a little girl. Her name is Priest Chiga. She was born on the 5th of March at 38 weeks, 6 days, weighing 3.5 kgs. Yeah. <laughs> Weighing 3.5. Remember, I told you at 36 weeks this child was 3.2. At 38, we were 3.5. So she was born at weighing 3.5. She's a big girl. She's growing perfectly. 10 perfect toes and 10 perfect little fingers. She's just perfection. We are sleeping well. We sleep for our intervals we sleep through the night we wake up twice at night she goes to sleep at 10 we wake up at 2 for her feet go back to sleep we wake up again at 6 for another feet and then we wake up at night that's our schedule during the day we are a bit restless like it's just short short naps but i'm not complaining so I'm well rested. I'm not tired. I sleep perfectly. I don't even need to sleep during the day because I rest perfectly at night. Like feeding time and things like 30 minutes feeding and then we are done. She's back to sleep. So it's more like just me waking up, going to the loo, going to drink water and then coming back and getting in bed. So we are God. And yeah we are happy we are happy guys and yeah man this is the end of my bad story a very dramatic one and she's the biggest baby most dramatic breath the calmest because bang 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 never pick up guys these other ones not talk about every two hours through the night these ones so i was tired i was, I was a new mommy postpartum i begs and everything but this one she's calm she sleeps we are mixed feeding as i said and it's going perfectly well we had a two-week appointment with her pediatrician and um she was weighing a flipping 3.9 so in two weeks we got from 3.5 to 3.9 and she's awake in three weeks we went from 3.5 to 3.9 so we are gaining weight we are growing perfectly we are big we are big and mommy and daddy are happy we are complete we is complete now thank you so so much guys for watching this video and i will see you in my next video love you places in the world i've been to this is where my heart is oh you know it's true no matter where i go i'm coming home to you been walking down the street so many times my feet know every brick and stone could wear a blindfold